Adam, another one of our favorite action movies, John Wick. Yes. So Fandom recently interviewed Chad Stileski, the director of all three John Wick films. Were you aware, Adam, that they were in production on a John Wick TV series? I was, because you spoke about it on this very channel. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The Continental. So this is, of course, centered on The Continental, which is basically, how would you describe it, Adam? It's uh, it's like the assassins' hideout where they all agreed. You put the guns away. There's no no weapons allowed on, or are weapons allowed? You're just not allowed to kill each other. You just can't kill each yeah. other. Nope. What's the name of that safe area between North and South Korea? The DMZ, demilitarized zone. Right. This is basically the D assassin zone. Right. Even if you two assassins are in the middle of trying to kill each other, if they if one of them runs into the continental. The fight is over. Or even if you're lying down next to the Continental and one of your appendages comes into contact <laughs> yeah. with it, you're good. I, yeah. I love all the rules of this world. It feels like the rules you would come up with on the playground when you're six years old. Yeah. If yeah. you're touching the swing set, you're on pause. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So in the interview with Chad Stileski, he revealed some details about their approach for the TV series. Here's what he said. The angle they're working on, the Continental TV show right now, is a different perspective on the whole world. It's coming at it from different characters' points of view and what the breadth of the world is. Whereas in John Wick, I'm following a time period that's almost just a week in the life of one man who everything spirals out of control, which is our John Wick story. By the way, that's something that's always fun to remind yourself of when you're watching the John Wick movies. We've been following this for years. This has all been in the span of about a week. Yeah, all three and, John and people films. forget also how quickly the events of the first movie happen. Uh, after his, this is not a spoiler. This is the premise of the movie: is that his wife is dead. That's right. And, yeah. Uh, that that only happens like a few days before the events of the first movie. That's right. That's right. Which explains why his emotions were so raw. Yeah. And you would go on a rampage over the death of a puppy. Every movie that comes after that is about a man in grief. That's right. And yeah. I just love how you can think back how all of this has spiraled out of control from that one event because that punk Theon, yes. Greyjoy, had to <laughs> stick his nose where it didn't belong. Great casting. <laughs> yeah, perfect casting for that role. And he goes on to say, the angle that the other producers and writers on the TV show are coming from is a very different timeline structure and a very different perspective of character about how deep the world goes. And not just assassins, but everything that's included. And a lot of the origin stories are some of the characters you see in Wick. So it's got some very interesting things. It's a very interesting take on the Wick world, which I think is pretty cool. But it won't be from the John Wick perspective. Not that John Wick won't be involved with it. It's just not from his perspective. So a few things to read into that. Number one, it sounds like Keanu Reeves may reprise his role as John Wick in the show. Yeah, it sounds that way. Also, it's good to hear that the director of the John Wick movies is taking an active role in the production. I think that's unusual for this sort of thing. If there's a great movie franchise and they say we're doing a spin-off TV show, my first assumption is that nobody from the movie is involved. It's a cash grab. But this has got the director. Keanu Reeves is clearly involved on some level. So it's got a lot going for it. Also, the showrunner is going to be a guy named Chris Collins, writer of John Wick 3. He was also a staff writer on The Wire, wrote for Sons of Anarchy, Man in the High Castle, Star Wars, Clone Wars, so he's got some bona fides, if that's how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> so the movies, the show's got a lot going for it. I will say I'm keeping some healthy skepticism. We were just talking about the Furiosa spinoff for Mad Max. And for that movie, I said the big draw for me is not so much the character, but the world. I would say John Wick is sort of the opposite. The main draw is Wick. And then second to that is the world. Mm -hmm. I love the world building in the movies. It's fun. It's sort of goofy. It's a good tapestry for the John Wick character to be awesome. But what do you think it's going to be like to take that world and now make it the focus? Do you think that could work? How are you feeling about this? If, the they, if they pick the right main characters to follow and the right plot line to occur within that world, I think they can do it. Now, do you think they'll have to sort of I wonder if they'll have to kind of tone down the goofiness of the world because when they reveal, I think in John Wick 2, that basically all the homeless in New York are yeah. secretly assassins. 
the fact that you can buy basically anything for one gold coin, no matter what it is, all those kind of goofy elements you see past them. But when you're watching 10 episodes of a series, I could see that getting old. It's sort of like you can't think about that stuff too much, but you might if you're watching it episode to episode. Well, one thing to consider is that we were we're being told the John Wick series is from the perspective of John Wick, whereas the TV show will not be. Right. John Wick is the top top tier, you know, uh, upper echelon of assassins. So mm. it kind of makes sense that his entire world would everything that revolves around him would be assassin related. Right, but right. Maybe for some lower tier, mid tier assassins, there's more of a mixture of like our real world and that world. Right, and they won't have gold coins that can throw and just get whatever they want. Yeah. They won't get bulletproof suits. John Wick has got imperial gold. These guys just have calamari flan. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I'm wondering is, of course, one of the biggest draws for John Wick are the fight scenes, the fight choreography. And I continue to be impressed with John Wick 2 and 3. They keep finding ways to top themselves. They keep finding ways to keep the fight choreography interesting, how are they going to keep that up in a TV series? Do you think they'll even try to? I mean, I would my mind would be blown if they could do a TV series that hits the highs that John Wick does. Or are they going to try and find ways to get us interested in this world without people stabbing each other with pencils and yeah. hitting each other with books? Well, the, the, this gives them an opportunity to in, introduce more characters with different fight styles. So mm -hmm. even if they can't necessarily top themselves, they might be able to sprinkle enough variety in there to keep us interested. For some reason, when you said different fight styles, the first thing I thought of was Tekken. With that one guy who kind of dance fights. <laughs> right, right. So there's a lot they can explore there. <laughs> Capoeira, I think. Capoeira Was that, is that the yeah. style? Yeah. <laughs> the one thing this brings to mind for me, too, is a show we keep bringing up, but Gangs of London. Yes. Because they're dealing with a similar issue. You've got Gareth Evans, who made The Raid, and he does these incredible action sequences. Then he comes out with Gangs of London, and at least from the two episodes we've watched, they've paced themselves. In the first episode, 90 minutes long, there's maybe one or two small fight scenes. So he found a way to get us interested, invested in the characters. So the fighting is there, and it's awesome, but it's not the focus the way it was for the raid. So maybe Chad Stileski can, Chad, yeah, Chad Stileski can do the same thing for the Continental. Any other thoughts on the Continental or John Wick? Alon, you haven't chimed in. Uh... Well, I hope there's some sweet fighting action in the show. It gets me a little a little nervous it won't be able to hold up to the standard set by the movie. Right. But I mean, it, you're you're telling me about Gangs of London. Yeah. It, you know, there's hope. There's precedent. It can be done. Adam, well, the writer has the cred to back this up, I think. I I'm mm -hmm. excited for it. Yeah. All right. Well, we will keep an eye on it for sure and we will be watching that show as soon as it airs.